After traveling around in my Storyteller Classic for the past two months, the build is finally complete. So let's take a look at it. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. I am so happy to tell you guys that my 2023 Storyteller Classic mode build is complete now. I'm out here on the road for the next two weeks or so and I am stoked to really put this thing through its paces. Now when I say that this build is complete, you guys should know that I'm using that term kind of loosely. I basically always say that whenever I'm building a vehicle, at this stage right now it's like 99% complete because there's always going to be some future modifications. However, after everything that you guys have seen over the past two months and my trip last week when I was visiting Adrenaline Vans in Montrose, Colorado, we knocked out all of the big items, all of the things that I knew that I wanted to add to the van and some of the things that I wanted to change up to make this thing fit my personality, to give me the functionality for the way that I want to use a van like this. So we crossed a lot of stuff off of my list and there may be some future mods, but for now I'm considering this build pretty much done. Now let's start this off with a really quick recap. This is my 2023 Storyteller Overland Classic Mode. It is the all-wheel drive version, and I picked it up two months ago from Storyteller headquarters in Birmingham, Alabama. From there, I went straight back home to Denver where we added some Inhabit floor mats, the drawer inserts, as well as this super sweet wrap that you see on here from Lucid Wraps. I then did a quick week-long ski trip out in Lake Tahoe before heading down to Canyon Adventure Vans where we completely transformed the inside of the van. I added the GSS, the CSS, their new Lux mattress, and a whole lot of other functionality in there which makes this van insanely livable. From there I went over to s &B Filters where we did the long-range 45-gallon diesel tank on here which I absolutely love. It makes my adventuring so much easier because I don't have to stop all of the time. And then I went over to Owl Vans in Mesa, Arizona where we dialed in the rear of the van with their Expedition Carrier, a B2 Carrier, and the Expedition Box. From Arizona, I made my way all the way up to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho to pay Van Compass a visit where we did the 6.3 suspension package. Adjustable Falcon shocks in all four corners. We have the new OptiRate leaf pack in the rear. The 6.3 kit also includes the two inch striker lift. So the van is up, it has more ground clearance. And with this kit, I was also able to fit some larger wheels and tires. So I have the Owl Talon wheels and Toyo tires, 285, 75, 17s on here. After the suspension upgrade, I came back to Denver, Colorado and paid Adam's Polishes a visit where we ceramic coated the whole van. It is a little bit dirty right now because I'm kind of out in the wilderness in Arizona, but that ceramic coat makes keeping this thing clean very easy. So once I get out of the woods today, I'm going to spray this thing off. That way we're looking all nice and fresh. And then from there, I made my way out to Montrose, Colorado to pay Adrenaline Vans a visit. And this is where I was really tackling a big laundry list of items. Now, I've been friends with the crew at Adrenaline Vans for a little while now. However, by the time I met them, my previous van was already kind of all the way built out. I saw a lot of the vans that they have built over the past couple of years, and the quality is outstanding. So, I knew that when I was doing a ton of modifications all at one time, I could trust them with getting me dialed in. And I'm not even just saying this because it's a new van and the parts are new and all of that, but this is definitely the most dialed vehicle that I've built to this day. Once we dive in, in here and take a closer look at all of the tiny details you guys will know what I'm talking about so without further ado we're gonna start up front work our way around the van and I'm gonna show you guys everything that we have done at Adrenaline Vans last week no better place to start than right up front here with a new product coming from Backwoods Adventure Mods. This is their new low profile Scout bumper. They have two different options when it comes to this bumper and I of course opted for the little bull bar option. It gives me some places to mount lights and while the install on this thing was a little bit tricky because of a few different reasons, we were able to get it installed and it looks super clean. A lot more low key than my previous build. The reason for running this bumper is of course for a winch and I opted for the Warren Xeon 12S. 
Now this was one of the issues with the install. If you go and check out their website right now, you will notice that they do not recommend putting one of these winches in here because the fitment is so dang tight. While working on the van at Adrenaline, we were able to get it in here and I'm happy we were because when I was ordering a bunch of parts through Adrenaline vans for this build, at the time the Warn Evo VR12S, which is what I would typically put in something like this, they had a recall and they were super hard to find. So I kind of bumped up to the bigger, better winch, the Xeon 12S. And again, Backwoods does not recommend getting a winch like this for this specific bumper because the fitment is so tight, it really doesn't fit, but we made it fit. And that is thanks to all the know-how at Adrenaline. So this bumper keeps all of your factory sensors. Also up front here, I have an Agency 6 Fairlead with their bright orange shackle as well to really tie all of the colors in on this build. The Scout bumper does have a front hitch, so I could put my hammock mount there or maybe even a motorcycle carrier if I want to carry maybe one of my lighter motorcycles. You of course have recovery points here for more shackles and it just looks so clean. The bull bar doesn't extrude very much. It's nice and tight fitting the way we kind of trimmed the plastic bumper here. It looks really good. Now also mounted on the bumpers here, this is when we're getting into the lighting. There is a ton of lighting all over this van right now. So for the bumper pods, I opted for Diode Dynamics SS5s. These are the pro versions, as are most of the lights on this van right now, which means they are backlit, kind of RGB. I have all of them set to amber, of course, and at night, it looks really, really good. I'm happy with the way these turned out. I have not wired in the backlights on any of my other diode dynamics lights on other vehicles. So I'm glad that we were able to kind of free up space on my switching components to make this work. I'll show you guys how I have all the electronics set up once we get into the hood here. Now right behind the grill here, kind of hard to see on video, but I did also upgrade the horn. These vans still come with that kind of like wimpy European horn. If you need to get someone's attention to get out of your way, whatever it may be, the stock horn on a Sprinter van is not great. So I opted for the Hellahorn kit that's coming from Agile Off-Road. So this thing sounds like a proper car horn now. Now let's actually pop this hood open and check out some of the modifications inside. You should immediately notice this modification right here. We now have hood struts. Now even these new sprinters do not have hood struts, so we added them here. CA Tuned Off-Road makes these little brackets and hood struts on each side, which makes getting in your engine bay a lot easier because you don't have to mess with the little bar, but also it opens the angle of the hood up even higher. I also am running their ditch light brackets for my Diode Dynamics SS3s. I of course have those on each side of the van. These are also backlit. And the hood struts took maybe five, 10 minutes to install. Super quick and easy. And it makes getting inside of this engine bay a heck of a lot easier. Now, starting on the left-hand side of the engine bay, you will notice that I now have an ARB connection right here because the van now has onboard air. I opted for the ARB twin air compressor, and Adrenaline was able to set this up with a stainless hose line from the front all the way back to the rear. So we have one connection point right here in the engine bay, and then I also installed one in the rear of the van behind the rear bumper. Now this is where you'll start to kind of notice the quality of the build. I could have just went with regular hose material, but in the past, I never showed this on video, but I actually melted and kind of popped one of the standard hoses. So now that will never be an issue with these stainless lines. Super good quality coming from Adrenaline. Now all of the wiring in here is crazy impressive. Everything really looks kind of factory, like it came from Mercedes this way. So we have really nice high quality wire looming routed up over the back of the engine here. And then coming down to the right side, you will notice where we have all of the power connected. We have two bus bars in here now, a positive and a ground, and all of that is feeding the Garmin power switch. I'm using a Garmin power switch on my Tacoma and I've come to love this system. It's very clean, simple, straightforward, easy to wire. And the guys at Adrenaline Vans made this wiring so damn clean. You already have a ton of room in this engine bay because it is the new all-wheel drive twin turbo four-cylinder diesel, but just look at how clean it is in here. I absolutely love it. I could nerd out about all of the wiring and everything here for a little while, but let's just uh, keep moving on. We can talk about more of that stuff later. Now, coming around to the side of the van, you will notice that I removed my stock running boards when 
I was up at Van Compass and we were doing the 6.3 install. Check this out. Open the passenger door. I now have an amp research step in here which automatically pops out when you're entering the vehicle. When you close the door, it retracts up under there, right underneath the pinch weld. It gives you a lot more ground clearance and aesthetically it makes the van just look a lot better in my opinion. It also of course works with the side door here, so when you're getting in and out, it makes the process a lot easier rather than stepping all the way up here. Close that up. And there are also little lights underneath here, which you're not gonna be able to see during the day, but you do have sort of puddle lights here so you can actually see what you're stepping on. Now we also wired a switch on the inside of the dash here, which allows you to keep this running board up in the up position, or also in the down position if you want to kind of set up camp and have the step down all the time. The reason you want to keep it up a lot of the times is of course in some bad weather or muddy areas. As you can tell, the van's a little bit muddy right now, but if it was really icy and snowy, I would probably want to keep that thing up that way. It's not gonna get damaged by freezing and trying to move if it's frozen to the van. So having that switch in there is a really nice touch. Now coming around to the back of the van, we got some stuff going on up top, but first let's start down here with a matching Backwoods Adventure Mods rear bumper. This is the same bumper that I had on my old van, so not a whole lot to talk about here, but it does act as a nice step to get into the van. It does retain all of the factory sensors, and I also have Diode Dynamics SS3 flush mounts in here, which are wired to the reverse light. So when I put the van in reverse, those things come on and they are insanely bright. Might be a little bit overkill for reverse lights, but it really ties the whole look of the van together. Now, if we look towards the top of the van here, this is where you will find Diode Dynamics SS2 Pros, and these I'm just using as camp lights or kind of like scene lights at night. The right side of the van has the awning light, so I didn't add anything over there, but in the back we have two SS2s. These are also tied into the backlights and it's really nice when you're laying in bed at night. I can access the Bluetooth app on my phone and get really bright white light out here. That way if there's any wildlife or anyone walking up on my campsite in the middle of the night, I'll be able to see them coming. Coming around to the side here, we of course now have a Max Tracks mount. Since all of the Storytellers come with a front runner rack, I of course opted for the front runner max track mounts up there, and I have a set of regular boards and the extreme boards as well with the pins to match. Now, I really prefer the extreme boards when it comes to sprinter vans because they are, of course, big and heavy. Those boards feel a little bit more rigid, so if you are carrying around traction boards, I would personally recommend the extremes. They are a little bit more expensive. They have the metal spikes on them. You can get away with regular boards, but if you've seen some of my older videos where I've used them, I actually tacoed a pair in the past. Not gonna be doing that with the extremes. Now moving over just a little bit further to go along with all of the backwoods gear, of course we had to opt for the backwoods ladder. Now this might be a first for a storyteller. I don't think I've ever seen a backwoods ladder on the storyteller. So the way I did this was actually taking like the revel portion of the ladder bottom. You'll notice it kind of follows the contour of the wheel well here all the way up to the middle where the rest of it is kind of normal up until the top plate. So if you are looking at the Backwoods website, this is essentially a revel ladder with a no roof rack top on there. The reason I like this ladder over the stock ladder that comes with the Storyteller is because these steps are nice and wide. I'm actually planning on putting grip tape on here like I did on my previous van. It also looks really nice aesthetically because it is matching the front and rear bumpers now. It's really just a personal preference. Any ladder will get you up to your roof. I just think this one looks really nice and has really nice quality to it as well. Now let's actually head up here and see what we did to the roof. So let's actually start back here in the corner. You will notice this flat little thing that looks like a cutting board. This is actually my Starlink. I did some videos on my Starlink in the past and I figured it would be very beneficial to have this thing hard mounted to this van because this is like my mobile workstation now. So I took my Starlink RV version, cut it all apart and put it in this star mount flat mount. This thing gives me high speed internet 
anywhere I'm at, even right here in the middle of nowhere, Arizona. I was actually getting 145 megabytes per second while I was driving yesterday on the highway doing 60 miles an hour. So this is of course not the most ideal way for a Starlink to function, but it does function. And I was kind of skeptical about that at first, but so far, it's been working great. I'm probably gonna bring you guys a dedicated video on that as well as the rest of these products at some point in the future too. Now coming over to the front of the van, you will notice that things have moved around just a little bit here because of my Diode Dynamics light bar. I opted for the eight pod crosslink from Diode, which is essentially eight SS5s, the pro version, all backlit, RGB. These are bright white, and I changed out the lenses on them for the best functionality. So out on the outside, we have floods. The two closer to the middle are combo lenses. The two in the direct middle are spot lenses, and then back to the combo and the flood on the outside. So you can kind of imagine what this spread of light looks like at night. And you guys will definitely see me using all of these lights in the future. I turned all of my lights on while I'm here at camp last night and it looked kind of like it does right now, just straight up daytime, which is rad. I mounted the crosslink on here with Diode's universal bracket, so it's actually going straight through the front runner rack, which took a little bit of time to figure out how to do it properly. They have these little rubber feet standoffs here, both in the middle, to give this thing some rigidity and you can tell, I mean, this light bar is pretty heavy, but it is so solid. You can still tilt it, you can move it left and right, it has a lot of of functionality as far as positioning goes and I am super happy with how this turned out. Now because that is taking the front position I did have to move the stock Storyteller wind fairing back which means I had to move everything else back so I moved my antenna over here into a new location. I also moved my Canyon Adventure Vans upper deck seating system forward just one slat. So everything up here still functions as normal. It's just slightly moved and the normal user probably wouldn't even be able to tell. Now one more thing up on the roof here is another camp light shining off the driver's side. Since I had room up here and I had an extra light, I figured I might as well wire that in. And that is the same as the ones on the rear of the van. I tried to keep the wires and cables as clean as possible. You may notice a few zip ties on here, but for the most part, it's looking very clean. It's looking very factory up here, which I love. Now let's climb down this ladder. I'll give you guys a quick look at this fitment here. This was a little tricky to mess with the fitment because I think, like I said, I might be the first person who has done this, but the no roof rack top mount for this backwoods ladder fits just perfectly under the front runner rack. And again, it looks kind of factory. It looks like Storyteller built it this way which is exactly what I was going for. Now, last but not least, let's move on to the interior of the van. Of course, with all of the wiring that we did all over the van, it has to get power and ground somewhere up in this area. So going back to kind of nerding out about the wiring, if you pulled up this floor right now and checked out the battery terminals, you would have no idea that I had all of these accessories on the van. We don't have anything tied directly to the battery terminal and it keeps things looking so damn clean under here. Again, this is not something that a lot of people will appreciate, but if you work on vans like this, you definitely would. We actually kind of teamed up with Rome Rig to extend the power underneath the seat. So there are bus bars under there and on older versions of the van, there were free posts where you could pull power from. However, on this new van, we found that that was not the case. So kind of long story short, we were talking with Aaron at Rome Rig and we were able to create a little kind of a bus bar that gives power to the extra posts in here, which is how we were able to get some of the power for the accessories. I can't speak on that too much because I hate electrical work. So if you guys want to know more details about this stuff, or if you want to order any of these parts and get work done on your van like this here, contact Adrenaline Vans. So speaking of Rome Rig, this is one that you cannot actually see right now, but I have the new Rome Rig beatbox system in this van. Now I'm definitely gonna be bringing you guys more information on this new beatbox system because previously I did a video of the install in my Revel and that was a whole kind of same thing, self-contained unit underneath the passenger seat. Now that was pretty new when I put that in my old van and since then Rome Rig has really beefed up this system. I am gonna bring you guys a full kind of dedicated video on this, but they actually took 
took a lot of customer feedback, maybe some issues that people were experiencing, and they completely changed a lot of components in here to make this thing sound even better than before. Now the stock stereo system in this van, just like my old van, it's not great. And when you're spending a lot of time on the road, it really makes sense to have a good stereo in here, not only for listening to music, but podcasts are a lot clearer. Phone calls, you can hear people a lot better. So I now have this new 10 inch sub version of the Beatbox underneath the passenger seat over here. Very straightforward on wiring. We also replaced the door speakers and the tweeters as well up in the corners. I would love to give you guys a sound test of this system, but of course it's not gonna come through in video. So if you see me out on the road at maybe Overland Expo or even just at a gas station and you want to hear the Roam Rig Beatbox system, let me know because this thing sounds really nice. Now, while we were sitting up here in the driver's seat, I also added a new GMRS radio, same radio from my previous van, and this is the Midland MXT275. Now, if you look around on the dash, you don't really see anything because we got a little bit creative with how I actually mounted this thing and wired it up. So right over here on the all wheel drive, the new chassis for the Sprinter van, you have no glove box, but you have this little panel here, which if you pop off is just a plastic box void in there. So I figured it was the perfect spot to actually mount this radio. So the radio is mounted in there and then I used an RJ45 connector, ran it through the dash over to the center here. So now if I reach into my door card, pull out this radio, all I have to do is connect that. If I have power to the van, now I have comms in the van. I am using the antenna that came with it, which we routed up through the roof, and that is kind of right up front there. So now I have communication. I can mount the handset right here, and I have this turned on so that I'm getting audio out of the handset as well as over there for the passenger. That way, if we're in a big group and I have a passenger and we're all kind of chatting together, passenger can hear really well over there and I can hear really well right here as well. When I'm not using the radio, turn that off, disconnect it and stow this away. And now, last but not least, you may have already noticed this, but I am sitting in absolute comfort right now because we have changed out the driver and passenger seat with some Shieldman Vario Fs. Now this is definitely a topic that I want to talk about in a video kind of of its own in the future because not many people understand the value about changing out your seats, especially when the seats are very expensive. Shieldman seats are super high quality, but they are also very expensive. And I have not used their seats in any of my other vehicles in the past, but I am super excited to have these now because I can actually form an informative, educated opinion on them. So far I had 172 hours in these stock seats that came with the van. I already now have 10 hours in these seats and it's a little too early to form my opinion, but I'm going to tell you that I already think that they're kind of worth it. There is a ton of functionality with these seats and these are kind of fully loaded. So one of the best things is that we have two armrests now not only on the right-hand side of the driver, but also on the left. I opted for the leather versions of these seats. They also have heaters built into them. We have a low and high, which you find down here on the seat base. And they are pretty much infinitely adjustable. You can rock them all the way forward, all the way backwards. You can change your lumbar support in and out, up and down. You can move the seat base in and out as well. So if you want some more support under your legs, you can slide it out, which is kind of how I have my seat adjusted right now. You can also adjust the bolsters in and out. So if you want a tighter, more snug fit, you can kind of make the seat hug you or you can open it up and have a little bit more wiggle room. Now we mounted these seats to the standard swivel bases. So of course they do spin around like they did from the factory, but they also have this extra feature here. If I lift up on this switch, the whole seat slides forward like that, giving you a very quick and easy way to just open up some more room in the back of the van here. The leather and build quality of these things is just super high quality and I'm excited to get some more driving time in these seats now. I don't mind driving and I kind of always look forward to it, but I'm looking forward to it extra now 
because I'm in these super comfortable seats, which are fine tunable to a point where it kind of fits you like a properly fitting ski boot. If you get a ski boot custom molded to your foot, it really improves the comfort and quality of everything. So because these seats are so adjustable, I'm already feeling a difference just after a 10 hour drive yesterday. So I will report back more on these Shieldman seats in a video here pretty soon in the future. That was a lot of information. Hopefully I covered everything. So that is it. That is my Storyteller Classic, now dubbed the Psy Mode. It was kind of my rendition of taking the base Storyteller model and upfitting it to kind of compete with their highest end model, the Beast, but in my opinion, might be a little bit better than the Beast at this point. It's really all personal preference and personal opinion. I really enjoy all of the components that I put on this van and it's really like a dream come true to take a super high quality vehicle and really fine tune it for how I'm going to use it here in the future. Now that will probably be close to the end of the modification videos that you guys will see of this van, at least for the near future. Now I can really get on the road and get back to my normal kind of daily life living out of a vehicle like this and bring you guys some more fun content. Not as much educational and informative, but just some good old hangs in the van out on the road. I'm excited and I hope you guys are too. Now before I sign off, I gotta give a huge thank you to the team at Adrenaline Vans, Tim, Brooke, Will, Josh. Everyone on their team is super knowledgeable. You can probably now see the high quality work that they do. So if you guys want anything that you see on this van from this video or even the stuff that I talked about in the recap, Adrenaline is basically a dealer for everything that you see on this van as far as the tank goes, the suspension, the lighting, the armor, everything that you see on this van you can order directly through Adrenaline. In, so hit them up if you have any questions and of course let them know that I sent you. Hopefully me building out this Storyteller Classic gives you guys some inspiration and motivation to really make your own personal van fit and tailored more towards you. So if you have any questions you can drop them in the comments down below. I'll try to answer anything as best as possible. And I am stoked to get on the road. I'm actually heading from some national forest that I'm in right now in Arizona down to Bisbee for an event this weekend. There's gonna be some good hangs and hopefully I will see some of you guys there at Weird Wild West, Bisbee, Arizona this weekend. So that is all that I got for today. If you guys are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe and make new videos every single week. As always, thank you for watching. I will talk to you in the next one.